Uh, looking forward to playing uh, the University of Pittsburgh. Coach Narduzzi has a really good team. Obviously, they're coming off of a very big win uh, off of Rice, where their offense has really uh, come around and scored a bunch of points. Uh, it's going to be a very tough, tough game. Obviously, they got us last year, and uh, we're looking forward for the rematch. It's going to be a homecoming weekend. We're going to have a lot of alumni back in town, and hopefully we're going to do a lot better. So I'm opening it up for questions. Question for Coach. Mark, you mentioned last year's game, and you mentioned their offense. And uh, what do you remember from last year's game the most? Did you anticipate anything like what you saw last year? The thing I remember is talking to the team before the game, talking to the team after the game, and my feelings during the game. And uh, it's just one of those games that, as a coach, it's hard to get rid of. And hopefully, as a player, it's hard to get rid of as well. Because of the point totals or just because of the loss? Yeah, because of the point totals, because of the loss. Did you see anything like that? Uh, I hope not. I'm not sure I could survive another one of those. I hope it's not like that. Mika? Coach, how different is Pittsburgh's offense? Obviously, the offensive coordinator moved down to LSU. How different from what you've seen on film are they this year? You know, they're really kind of similar. They still do a lot of shifts, a lot of motions, kind of the same thing that uh, Canada does when, we, when he's at, now he's at, he's at US, I mean, uh, LSU. Exact same thing. They try to run the ball like they, uh, with a big back like they did with the Connor kid when he was there. And the quarterback, uh, Brown from, uh, from uh, USC, the transfer, he does a nice job distributing the ball, moving it around. But anybody that can throw for 400 yards in a game is, you know, He's got an opportunity to not only be big time, but an opportunity to put a big hurt on your football team. So they're good. Matt Pensilver. Uh, so, um, Comer said you just took four balls out of bounds for a spot. Are you okay? Are you okay with that? Do you see any sports just decide? Okay. No, I'm not okay when the ball goes out of bounds. That's not good. Okay, but uh, he's also kicked a lot of balls inbound. And his aiming point uh, is down the hash. Oh, they're, you know, they're an item off the field. They're, they're like big brother, little brother taking care of each other. But, you know, those guys are really cool. They're really good friends. I think they do a nice job with the young freshmen that are in the group trying to uh, give them the right work ethic and leave us, you know, leave us with the right mental attitude for when these guys graduate six, seven games from now, that uh, that receiving core kind of carries on the tradition that uh, Amba started last year and what those two guys are doing this year. First of all, I've never been around a situation where I've seen anybody get paid. I, when that happened, I actually told our guys, I said, hey, none of you guys, are, I'm just telling you guys right now, you can look left, you look right. The guys you just looked at, none of those guys are getting paid. We're not paying anybody here. Okay? But I don't want to, from a basketball standpoint, that stuff is mind-boggling to me. You know, Everywhere I've been, we've been good about that stuff, and we've been above board. Hopefully not. Hopefully no kumbaya meetings. We just go out there and play a good game and everything works out. Um, maybe described it another way. Have you seen an increased sense of urgency or maybe a response kind of from the older guys in the D heading into the season? Had a, a really good meeting Sunday with a bunch of urgency in it, just like you're talking about. And I think that uh, the, the older guys understand that their time's running out, sand in the hourglass. It's, it's, it's coming to an end. And what we need to do is have the uh, freshmen and the sophomores have an appreciation for making sure we send these seniors out the right way, because they've done a lot. But we want to send them out the right way. So I think that's where the, uh, the urgency needs to come from, is the underbelly more so than the senior class. Any moment in particular stand out from that meeting, or kind of what you expect from older guys knowing their time's running out? I think it's just, a, just normal stuff. Yeah. Nate? I'm not, not to belabor last year's game, but the key is everything that comes after the word but. Okay, I'm tuned in. <laughs> you know, it was, the, it was at the end of a long season. Um, you know, at, at that point, pretty much a bowl game was off the table. Was there anything that you noticed in your, your team's level of preparation in the week before that game that may have 
succeed at the performance that ultimately unfolded? In that I, not in the preparation. Both, the bowl game was not off the table because when you have a school with an APR rating as high as we do, five wins can get you in a bowl game based off of what the six, how many six and six teams there, there were. So, and they understood that, that w as far as I was concerned, we were still playing for a bowl game. Now, uh, did they go about and play that game the way I wanted it played? No, they did not. And that's something that I've got to live with. But uh, I'm going to work really hard to make sure something like that never happens again. More than just maybe, I think Paris and Zaire were, they played, but they were not they really didn't play that much. If you, I want to say, I'm not, I may not be exactly right, but somewhere right around the first quarter, uh, Zaire was out of the game, Paris was out of the game, our entire linebacker crew was, uh, were backup linebackers, were our, our second team linebackers, based off of injuries or stuff that had gone on in the game. I want to say that's right. You guys can check it for me. And you think that's kind of what led to the house of cards collapsing? No, I'm not going to say that. That's, that's an excuse. I'm not going to say that. We got guys that take reps that are number twos and number threes, and when someone goes down, the other guys come in the game and they need to be able to function. That's why they get reps in practice. So, no. Kind of getting back to the basic of Syracuse and Pittsburgh, Syracuse hasn't played any other college team more than they have Pitt. Uh, was that something you talked to the guys about? It's it kind of a rivalry, you know, all the, I don't know the exact number, 70, 80 times they played. Uh, now special is that part of it? Well, I think it's really special. And I, you know, we can, say, we can talk about another school that's kind of like that, but we won't do that right now. But they understand that when Pittsburgh and Syracuse gets together, that there's a lot of people watching and uh, there's a lot of history behind that game. And you know the states are close to each other. All the PA people know all the NY people, and uh, you know the bragging rights are out there. So it's going to be a good contest. Uh, I mean, they're a really good football team, and they're physical, and they beat us last year. And they're coming to our place this year, and hopefully we're going to do a lot better than we did last year. Chris, you know the question I asked earlier, I guess it, it makes me think a little bit about uh, athlete compensation. I don't know if you've ever asked your opinion on it. <coughs> Given all the revenue college football generates, do you think athletes are, are fair? This is, this, this is easy for me, okay? I was the first person in my family to go to college, okay? I went to college on a, on a football scholarship. It said student athlete on it. And to me, to have an opportunity to go to college that I would not have been able to go to, my family would not have been able to afford to, and to get an undergraduate degree and a master's degree out of it based off of what I did on the football field and what I did as a graduate assistant coach, I think is more than enough okay, for compensation based off of what I did for the game and how it changed my life. So there's my answer. Thank you. Uh, you know, how would you evaluate Eric Dunphy's uh, passing accuracy so far this year, especially on, on throws more than 10 yards? You know, I think, I think he's been on. The thing that's been happening is we're, we're still having some trouble with timing all the stuff up. There's been some different receivers. Outside of throwing the ball to Ish, we've had different receivers in there. Started with Custis, then we've got uh, Butler, had Sean Riley. We're moving guys around and the timing's going off a little bit. We've had some, um, sometimes the pocket hasn't been as clean as we'd like it to be. And all those things affect, you know, a wide receiver, I mean, a quarterback and his timing. Our throwing game is very, very professional. It's, it's based off of a time clock. It's a rhythm throwing game and everything has to be exactly right. The pocket has to be correct. Quarterback's feet and steps have to be correct. And the depth and the yardage of the wide receivers has to be correct. If any of those three things are off, it throws off the timing, which can throw off the accuracy. You know, the, the plan is to try to get him on the field more. What we're trying to, we want him, to, he's a player that we need on the field, but we need him to be consistent. And he has made big plays for us, but we need to get consistent play out of him as well. Moe's one of our best players, and we're always trying to find him to get him on the field. His, his biggest asset is that he's a multiple player. And sometimes by playing all those positions, we've got to make sure that we don't hurt him because he's helping us by having that flexibility. If I figured it out, 
we'd, we'd be doing a lot better. We're going to work really hard on this week to see if we can change it. Really hard. And when you go back and look at the two differences that I had, what are you seeing in the first half that you're not seeing? What are you seeing in the second half? That's we're, seeing, we're, seeing incons we're being inconsistent in the first half, whether it's with reads, whether it's with drops. And uh, our mistakes are keeping us from functioning at that level that, we're fu that we need to function at and the level that we've been functioning at in the second half. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.